So I've been going over a lot of Module Federation videos lately, and there's always been this dynamic import that you have to put in your entry point. And I know that this is causing the Angular team a couple of challenges at the moment, mostly because they depend on static analysis, and they can't really perform static analysis if there's a dynamic import at the top of the app. So over at Webpack, we've got a plan to try and resolve it, but it is a little bit trickier to actually do inside the Webpack core. And this got me thinking, if there was a way to do this that's not necessarily the full-on Webpack way, but some kind of interim solution. So what I'm pretty much going to do in this video is just try and solve it. So there's nothing really prepared. I haven't really tried anything out. Most of this is just a theory that I'm operating on. So let's see what happens. So what I'm going to do is I've just started up the basic host remote app. And this is what we have. I have a file in here just called other file. And it's just exporting something random out. And that's mostly so that I can see that, you know, the exports show up. So I have always been interested in this project that's called Webpack Virtual Modules, and I've used it for various things to kind of orchestrate a whole bunch of boilerplate without having to worry about developers needing to actually handle that boilerplate. Uh, it's really great for abstracting things that don't work well when abstracted. So I thought, okay, well, to solve this whole bootstrap import issue, maybe I could just use virtual modules and actually rewrite how the Webpack processes files once it's loaded into the memory file system that the compiles actually run off of. So I went over here and I looked at it and you know the last time it was really updated was November 28th so I wasn't too hopeful. But it turns out I gave it a shot, installed it, and it didn't cause any errors. So it looks like it's not throwing any build errors, and I might be good to go on it. So what I'm going to go over here and do inside of just app one in the Webpack config, I went ahead and installed this Webpack virtual modules. And for right now, I'm just going to create some virtual module called module bar and that's going to be the exports mainly i'm doing this just so that i can see if the thing actually works so i expect module bar to exist somewhere i'm going to go over here into my app and i'm going to try this out and hopefully if it works we should see the export bar with a value of bar show up Cool. So it works. So I'm good to go. So it works great with node modules, but I wanted to figure out, okay, how can I make it change things outside node modules? So I gave that a shot. And in this case, I've got other file over here. And if I get rid of that and uncomment this, let's see. There we go. Testing one, two, three. So pretty standard import. And it's pretty much exactly what I'm exporting out over here. So now I'm going to go into the build, and I'm going to attempt to change what otherfile.js actually is. And this is mostly so that I can check if I'm actually able to change anything in Webpack's file system once it's read off the disk. So if this works out, it will kind of clear the way for whatever else I'm going to try and do in this video. And I honestly don't know exactly how I'm going to tackle this, because this is literally as far as I made it before I thought maybe this is worth screencast. So what I do is path join, I get the current directory I'm on. It just happens to be flat with source, so that works out. Join it to source, and I join other file JS. And what I'm going to do is pretty much try and change the exports on it. So let's restart the build. Okay, awesome. And there we go. 
So I have been able to override what this file is with a virtual module that I've written here. So this is looking promising. So what I'm going to do is take a look at our entry point, which is still the import bootstrap. And then here's my bootstrap file that I usually have. So what we're going to try and do now is revert this and have it be like you would have in a normal app. And we'll see what happens. This is probably not going to be the cleanest implementation in the world. Cool. It breaks just like I would expect. My main concern right now is just making it work. If I can make it work, then that's good enough for me. Someone else can clean it up or I can go and clean it up myself. So my virtual modules, I create the plugin, call it virtual modules, and I just attach it to plugins here, just like usual. And now what I'm going to try and do is see, can I actually override the entry point directly? Just to start, I need to see what the limits are of this plugin and what I'm actually able to do with it. I don't really care about an export, I don't think, so let's just try logging something. Okay, cool, I can override entry points. Awesome, I think this will actually work. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to create this bootstrap mechanism, but I need to make it kind of hidden away somewhere in Webpack, not directly in the file system where TypeScript or Angular CLI would perform its typical static analysis. So I'm going to get the contents of this file. All right, so what I'm going to look for is pretty much this file, which is the original entry point. And we'll see if it actually finds it. I don't really know if I need a flag on it or not. Awesome. Yeah, cool. All right, so I've got the contents of the original entry point. And I'm going to go ahead and create a second virtual module here. We're going to call it Bootstrap. And we're going to see if this actually works. Not sure if it's going to be able to compile. All right, so I'm going to create a Bootstrap. The Bootstrap's going to contain the actual contents of the entry point. So now what I'm going to try and do is change the entry point that you would usually get, seeing as I know I can override existing code. Oh my god, that actually worked. I'm, I, I cannot believe that actually works. Yeah, okay, so that was a lot less work than I had anticipated, but it seems to do the job. So what's going to happen is when you start a build, Webpack takes the contents of whatever you're going to try and bundle, and it pretty much pulls a lift and shift, and it moves it into MemoryFS. Inside of MemoryFS, it actually performs all the steps that it needs to do. I pretty much am retrofitting the entry point, and I just create the bootstrap file like I have in all of my other demos, and that has the contents of your entry point. So even though you don't have to change the structure of your app, it still does the same thing that it always did before. So this is really exciting. I think this is actually going to unblock the Angular team. So let's see if we can make any improvements to this now that it works. I'm really dependent on knowing the entry, so I'm wondering if I can tap into some kind of a hook. Let me see if this project offers the ability to do something like a function. See if the source will handle a function or not. The static modules. All right, so static modules is just going to come in like that.
what I could do is just extend it. I guess the compiler will work. All right, so this is still written in ES5, so I'm just going to use ES6 on it, though. So and let's just log the compiler. All right, so I'm wondering, do I need to handle all these scenarios that would come with this? I think for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to handle one. And if somebody needs to change it, then the code is somewhere in one of my repos. So change it to do whatever you want. The next thing I want to do is look up what's on the actual instance of virtual module plugin. And what I'm going to try to do here is pull out the, let's see, what I'm going to try to do is go in and kind of get, get this piece here, the static modules. So I'm going to start off, I think now is probably a good time for me to just create a new plugin for the, like a new folder for this plugin. So we're just going to call it, let's see, virtual bootstrap. And what I'm going to do is create a few properties on this object. So I'm going to get the original entry source from here. And then now that I'm doing that, I can probably get rid of actually passing anything in here at all. See if that gets rid of the errors that I'm encountering. No such directory or file open. Source slash index. All right, yeah, so I didn't think that I would be able to resolve what Webpack gives me here because I'm using FS. So we're going to try and do something like a require resolve. Let's give it a check before I continue on here. I'm going to get the entry resolve where it comes from to get the actual file name. I'm going to take the entry here, get the folder that it's in, and I'm going to pretty much just pull over this bootstrap.js that gets virtually created. And the path is going to be that in bootstrap.js. It'll always sit at the same level, so that's fine. And then the contents of this bootstrap file is going to be whatever the original entry source was. And I think that will do it. There's the bootstrap that I create virtually. 
Yeah, all right. It looks like it works. That is surprisingly good news. All right, so now that we have it working here, I want to go and apply this elsewhere. And now I should not have any dynamic import bootstraps that I have to manually write, assuming this works. So we're going to find out what happens when I run it. And what does 3002 look like? And that worked as well. Great, so that's a pretty fancy workaround. We use virtual modules and we just inject the mechanics that we need for the app to run itself properly into Webpack's in-memory file system while it's compiling. So the files are still there, they just happen to be injected into the graph and not available on the disk. So anything that you have like TypeScript or whatever else that might need to work with the entry point normal way, that all I think should still operate as you would require it to. All right, well, that covers it. That's how you get rid of the dynamic import workaround that's mandatory for these apps to run. We still need it, it still has to be there, but you don't necessarily need to look at it or type it out on disk. There's no problem with us just injecting it into Webpack directly while it's compiling. So hopefully that helps.